Hello everyone, we are Will and Alex and today we are in Copenhagen. You can usually find us recreating photos from our Around the World in 2000 video series, but in this video we want to simply share our insights from our three night stay in the city. In this video we're going to cover how we got there, where we stayed, restaurants and food we ate, sites to see, activities to do, and souvenirs to buy. At the very end, we'll have a screen which lists all the notes from my Google Maps I had on my phone. So feel free to screen grab that to use it to plan your trip. All right, let's start with how we got there. We chose to fly from Prague to Copenhagen, which was a short one and a half hour flight. From the Copenhagen airport, there are several ways to get up to the city. We chose to take the bus because it was cheap and direct to our hotel. You can buy bus tickets inside the airport. They even have people to help you at the machines. Your hotel can also help you decide which line you need to take. We took the bus about 30 minutes to Dan Hostel, which is where we stayed. We'll put a link below. It is definitely a hostel. Hello, we made it to the Dan Hostel and checked in. Everything went really smoothly. They were super nice at the front desk. The weird thing about this hostel is that they give you a bag of linen and you have to make your own bed and then strip your beds at the end of the stay and put them in like, a hole like a hole in the wall downstairs um but overall we're really happy because i requested a room with the view and they gave us this six person bunk room uh on the top floor in the corner with this amazing view of the city and i'm so excited we're right on the river and so you can see the water over there and all of the church spires mm. this is nice I asked some friends who used to live in Copenhagen where we should stay, and they said really anywhere. It's an easy city to get around, which is why we chose a cheaper option like Dan Hostel. It was a little bit of a walk to the center of town, but it was definitely affordable and had the cheapest beer in the city that we found. You can also rent bikes from them, and like I said, I'll leave a link below. We're super excited to be in Copenhagen, and we're gonna settle in here and then go to a food market. Woo! Now I'm going to tell you some markets and restaurants we went to, as well as some specific food items we were looking for on the menus. Where are we at now, Alex? <laughs> we're at the Rowan's Food Market. It's an outdoor cafeteria and everything looks really good. It smells really good too. Yeah. There are a couple food markets in Copenhagen and this one is pretty close to the Nyhaven area. There's a vegan place, some seafood places, drink places, and a pasta place. Public restrooms are clean and free. Nearby is also this really cool kaleidoscope you can hang out in. If you are near the Nyhaven area, my friend gave me some restaurant recommendations. First, Apollo Bar is great for breakfast and brunch, and they have good seasonal menus as well. The Union Kitchen is also a good spot for brunch. Nearby is also Restaurant Plus, which my friend said is typical Danish food and good for a date night. But really, could you go wrong eating at any of these cute cafes by the water? If the water doesn't do it for you, a highly recommended rooftop eatery was the cafe on the roof of the Elum shopping center called Original Coffee. Now, we were on the hunt for Danish food. While we were in Copenhagen, we managed to eat our way down our checklist. First was a red sausage hot dog at a recommended hot dog stand, DOP organic hot dog stand. A traditional schmorse broad dinner, which consists of a plethora of open-faced sandwiches. My friend recommended Ammon's 1921, but we actually had ours at Copenhavner Caffeine. Other places we checked out for Schmorse Broad were Restaurant Kronberg and this place called Schoenemann. We ate Frikadeller, traditional Danish meatballs, at Restaurant Clara. I read online that Restaurant Clara also has good Schmorse Broad options and herring as well. Speaking of options, we visited a second food market. We made it to the second uh, food market on our list in Copenhagen. This one's called the Torve Hallern. And our friend told us to go to Ia de Sanchez for some tacos. So we're gonna see if that's open today. We're also spotting some craft beer bars nearby. So, let's go. We got our tacos. This market is so great. There's like two big indoor places with food and shopping and then a big outdoor market with like flowers and fruit and veg. Seating is a little bit limited, but we had to walk a little bit and we found an open bench, so we grabbed it. Now, taco time. <laughs> After tacos, we were in need of a beverage. The place to go in Copenhagen is a traditional bodega. The official Visit Denmark tourism page describes them as a musty and hazy, low-key and friendly, dim and relaxing place to drink. The overwhelming smell of beer, the heavy tobacco fog, the low ceilings, wooden walls, dark brown interior, and old posters, as well as the dim yellow lighting sets the scene for a charming atmosphere. 
Sounds like our kind of place. We found this one, but you could go to any of the ones you find on Google Maps. We also went to Floss Bar, which seemed to cater to a younger crowd. We also ate pizza at this place across the street from there, and it was amazing. The Visit Denmark page also has a list of more famous bodegas, and I'll link that below. We couldn't end this portion about food without mentioning the absolute best bakery we've ever been to. Sarah Anderson Bakery. They have so many like amazing looking things and you can see the chefs working behind some glass. And the plates are warm, guys. Like, this place is it. I miss Anderson's Bakery every day of my life. We went there every morning as it was just across the bridge from the Dan Hostel where we were staying. Now I'm going to tell you about the sites and activities we were able to do during our stay, as well as some recommendations we didn't get to do. One of the more obvious things you can do is go on a canal cruise. We chose to do a bike tour instead, but my friend recommended Hey Captain as the place to go. They do have larger canal boats in the Nyhaven area as well. As I mentioned, we went on a bike tour, which was booked through Airbnb. Copenhagen is extremely flat and bike friendly, so even as a nervous biker, I still got along pretty well. Bikes, bikes, bikes. Bikes were good so far. I have not fallen or hit anything. <laughs> There's still time. There's a lot of time. <laughs> the bike tour took us to some important sites that weren't quite within walking distance, such as the historic Yellow Naval Barracks, the Rosenborg Palace with its museum and gardens, the Amalienborg Palace, which has a museum and royal guards, and of course, the Little Mermaid statue. She is really out in the middle of nowhere. We also visited the Church of Our Savior. The 17th century church is free to enter and the interior is really beautiful and peaceful. The church's claim to fame is the external spiral staircase which wraps around the spire. So, apparently you have to book a time online. There's a QR code outside the door. It's about $8 per person to go in, I think. Yeah, it was just, it was half hour time slots and it was really easy. So we have a time slot for like 25 minutes from now. So we're gonna go in the church and just hang out. Yep, you can pay with your credit card online when you go to reserve your time slot. Got our water, might stretch. <laughs> it's about eight floors. Yeah, you can do it. All right. It's already coming off. <laughs> One flight of stairs. <laughs> Getting in here was easy. We just um, bought our tickets online, waited a little bit in the church, and then we went up the stairs, uh, told the lady our name, and we we're on the list, and she's like, cool, go ahead. Now I have a jillion stairs to go up. There are some panels with info along the way, but for the most part, it's just stairs, 400 to be exact, with 150 of them being outside. We made it to the top of the tower and we are going down now. It really wasn't too crowded. I think they regulate the amount of people who could go every half an hour pretty well. You kind of just get to the top and that's it and everyone's kind of just standing there on the stairs. But it was still like such a beautiful view of the city and I think it was well worth the money. And really it didn't take that long to get up here. There were some spots where the stairs were really steep going up the tower, um, but otherwise I mean, we've done, we've done way worse. <laughs> Definitely recommend for Copenhagen. Nearby the Church of Our Savior is the Freetown Christiania. I did not know much about this before visiting, and I'll put a link with more info below. It's an autonomous anarchist district of Copenhagen with many artists, studios, an outdoor theater, and lots of eateries. It's also a place where one can buy the devil's lettuce, among other things, and for that reason, filming in some places is prohibited. Will also looks like an undercover cop, so we didn't quite get the warm and fuzzy from the locals who live there but I have read a lot of reviews saying it's probably not the best place to bring your kids, so visit at your own discretion. Not to be confused with Christiania is the Christiansborg Palace, where you can tour the lavish interior and stables. I toured the royal reception rooms, which included 19 different rooms. It costs about 13 US dollars for an adult and is free to people under 18. It was stunning and there are info panels everywhere. I was most impressed by the Great Hall and its custom tapestries, the library, and the Abeldgaard room. They also offer a combo ticket where you can see the reception rooms, royal kitchen, the castle ruins, and royal stables. Here are a couple other places I wanted to visit but we didn't have the time. The Carlsberg brand store. I heard their tour is very good if you're beer people like us. The Elephant Gate and Tower, which I found on Atlas Obscura. Also on Atlas Obscura was the Grundvig's Church. I really wanted to visit the National Museum and take the Viking and Medieval Guided Tour. 
The Design Museum Denmark has a super cool collection. On our bike tour, we passed by the Castellet Fortress, but unfortunately did not get off our bikes there. When we were there, the Tivoli Gardens were unfortunately still closed for winter. It is a 19th century theme park with live entertainment programs during the summer. Definitely worth a visit. Lastly, there's an open air museum about 30 minute train ride north of the city with buildings from the 1600s. It looks like a really beautiful place to visit and they also offer themed programs depending on the season. Okay, let's talk about some souvenirs you can get from Copenhagen. You can find many of these here, which is a notable shopping street in the city and one of the longest pedestrian streets in Europe. We collected our souvenirs from all over, really, but here's a list to start with. Number one, anything Hans Christian Andersen. He's famously from Denmark, so he picked up a collection of his fairy tales at this touristy place called Welcome Gift Shop and Souvenirs. They also have all the magnets, Christmas ornaments, and little mermaid replicas you'd ever want. Danish wooden ducks. I don't know why, but it's a thing. I'll put a link below. Silver, especially something from George Jensen, a famous silversmith who lived in Copenhagen. There's a storefront on the main shopping street as well as one in the airport. If you're looking for something extra fancy, anything porcelain from Royal Copenhagen is just for you. It was founded by Queen Julianne Marie in 1775 and can be recognized by its factory mark of a crown atop three hand-painted waves. Legos. Did you know Legos were founded in Denmark? There's a great Lego store on that main shopping street I mentioned. Anything Huga. If you're familiar with interior design or just love cozy spaces, you've probably heard of Huga. It's a word which means a mood of coziness with feelings of wellness and contentment. I hope to find a book on the trend while there, but I'll have to settle for buying one online. We did find this fantastic store called Noor, which I would highly recommend when looking for souvenirs. They have tons of beautiful books, clothing, decorations, and health and wellness products. The whole place is a vibe. I really loved it. There are a lot of things to buy in Copenhagen, and these are just a few that I was looking for. I'm attaching a good post below called 29 plus authentic Danish souvenirs to buy in Copenhagen in parentheses recommended by a local. I really wish I had this list before we went there. Three nights was a good amount of time, but as always longer would have been better. And now we have an excuse to go back as promised. Here's the compiled list of recommendations for you to screen grab in three, two, one. Thank you so much for watching and please leave your Copenhagen recommendations in the comments. Till next time, bye. Do a wheelie.